What will happen in heaven after the rapture? 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 to 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 to 17, Apostle Paul gave the believers the summary of the rapture event. The rapture will be preceded by the blast of a trumpet, which will cause all the dead in Christ to rise to meet the Lord in the air. Thereafter, all the saints which are alive will be caught up together to meet the Lord. The dead saints will rise first, and the living saints will be transfigured to join them. So, you who are alive now, you who are living in Christ now, and are listening to me right now, look out for those who died in Christ to rise first, and know that you too are going up straight after them. Today, we are not going to focus on the rapture, but we are going to focus on what takes place after the rapture, the judgment seat of Christ, which is also known as the Bema. Romans 14, verses 10 to 12. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. The Bema occurs after the rapture and before the second coming. The term judgment seat or Bema was well known to those in Corinth, the church where Paul introduced the term, the Bema. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. After the rapture, all Christians will come before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged by Jesus Christ himself. This judgment will not determine whether we are able to enter heaven. Our sins have already been forgiven through the substitutionary death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It will, however, be a time to account for the works we have accomplished on earth, and we will be rewarded accordingly. So yes, this is the judgment you want to be a part of. It still, however, will be a judgment nevertheless. But the wonderful thing is the location of your eternity will not be in question here. At the judgment seat of Christ, only believers that are raptured will be present. This means that the judgment of believers will not be done alongside the judgment of unbelievers. The judgment of unbelievers is what the Bible refers to as the Great White Throne Judgment in Revelation 20 verses 11 to 15. This is the judgment you do not want to be a part of. There are believers who do not know that Christ will judge them. Tommy Nelson states that the judgment seat of Christ and is, in my opinion, the most untaught area of Christology. It's not because its teaching is not known in the Bible, but it is just not taught. Maybe it's because we as Christians are so delighted to know that we have escaped judgment through Christ, who removed our judgment, that the notion that we will still be judged for our works, not sin, mind you, but what we did with our Christian lives, is unnerving to us. I believe there is a lot of truth in this statement. There are believers who do not know that Christ will judge them. They think that all they have to do is just to be saved and nothing else. They do not labor for the Lord while they are on earth. We believers will all make heaven, but our rewards will vary. What will determine the reward of an individual 
is the quality of works he or she has done for the Lord while on earth. If every believer will bear this in mind, then they will learn to invest their whole life into the service of the Lord. Jesus encourages his followers to focus on stockpiling treasures in heaven. The rewards that you receive in heaven are eternal. Heavenly treasures are everlasting and incorruptible. Matthew 6 verse 20 But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All our labors of love will be rewarded when we get to the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone's work will be brought to light on that day and our secret deeds will be revealed before all. The motive behind every service we render to God on earth will be revealed on that final day. You do know that someone can do the right thing for the wrong reasons. For instance, someone can become a pastor, and rather than their motive being to shepherd God's sheep, their motive could be to have power over people. Another example of this is giving to the poor. Some people give to the poor for the wrong reasons. They give to the poor in order for their name to be exalted, in order for them to be adored by other people. Their motives are not towards obedience to God's word, but rather human adoration, human exaltation. On the judgment seat of Christ, your motives will be judged. Paul wrote about this in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 13 to 15. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. A fiery test is coming that will reveal the quality of the work of everyone who helps to build the Church of Christ on earth. Our motives and the level of commitment we put into the business of God determines its quality. There are believers who serve God for the honor of men. There are some who just want to be seen and applauded. There are some who do the work of God to make a name for themselves. All these will not stand the test of fire that will judge our works at the judgment seat of Christ. However, whatever service you offer to God out of a pure and selfless heart will endure the fire as gold. The scene of the judgment of believers is going to spring lots of surprises because there are people you never noticed on earth that will be greatly rewarded in heaven because they worked for the Lord secretly with all their hearts. And there are some who are public figures but are filled with pride and self-glory. They will suffer loss when their works are consumed as stubble. The fire is coming. Now I want to ask you a question today. The things you do for God, what is your motive behind them? When you give to the poor, what is your motive? Are you recording it and then posting it on social media so that your friendship circle exalts you and tells you how much of a wonderful person you are? Or are you doing it to be obedient to the word of God? The things you do, are you doing it to be obedient to God? Or are you doing it to be impressive to people? Or to stroke your own ego? Remember, everyone will get a just reward for their works. Even the parable of talents which Jesus told suggests to us that we shall have various ranks and authority in heaven. Luke 19 verses 16 to 19 says, Then came the first, 
saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. The first servant was the most productive, and he had a greater authority than the other. Brethren, there is nothing you do for the Lord on earth that will not be rewarded in heaven. Even for a cup of water given to anyone in the name of Christ, Jesus promised a reward. Mark 9 verse 41 Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. If all believers are aware that a cup of water will be rewarded, we will all live sacrificial lives to get Christ's ultimate approval at the end. What is the quality of your work for the Lord? Can your work endure the judgmental fire of Christ when tested?